Milwaukee Brewers. The Cardinals red, red hot. However, last night they lost their closer. Second to last pitch he threw of the evening. Isringhausen felt something but decided to throw another pitch. And then his final pitch of the night, a strained abdominal muscle. That means that Jason Isringhausen is now on the disabled list. And the Cardinals are presented with their first big challenge of 2005. Welcome to the broadcast booth. I'm Joe Buck. Al Roboski in just a second. Never are you going to go through a season where some major piece of the puzzle isn't there. And now this red-hot Cardinals team, winners of 10 of their last 11, will have to go over the next 15 days without their closer. And Al Roboski, first things first, how great a start was Jason Isringhausen off to? And is this a situation where the Cardinals are going to have to mix and match over the next couple of weeks? Well, it is. And he was out to an outstanding chance. And prior to that time, he was 7 for 7 in save opportunities. It was a good thing that Randy Flores picked up the save last night so you didn't lose the ball game. But I think, you know, Tony La Russa, you never want to lose your closer. But I think in many ways, he's anxious for this challenge because you probably are going to use the veteran guys, Tavares and King, down there to close out ball games. But sometimes, because you don't have your bona fide closer, you might look at the heart of the order coming up in the eighth inning, and you use your best reliever in the eighth inning because that's really when the save or the game is on the line, and then you could have somebody else pitch the ninth. We'll talk about the front part of the game and our four dealers' key matchup, and that is a matchup of these two right-handers hooking up today. Victor Santos, look at the start he's off to, and then it was, what, a week? ago that we were sitting in the same spot watching Chris Carpenter with that fantastic nine inning start against the Chicago Cubs. Well, they're both coming out off uh, outstanding performance to Santos last time out first complete game of his career. He gave up only run one run to San Francisco and then you know Carpenter shut him out. So very good hands for both managers today. One more day left after today of this homestand. It is Victor Santos for the Milwaukee Brewers taking on Chris Carpenter for the St. Louis Cardinals. The Cardinals 10 of 11. Let's make it 11 of a dozen. We'll come back and talk about Albert Pujols on the other side of this break on FSN Midwest. Cardinal Baseball on FSN Midwest is brought to you by Bud Light. Fresh, smooth, real. It's all here. By Auto Tire. For straight talk and great service, you ought to go to Auto Tire. By Steak and Shake, real steak steak burgers and real milk milkshake served 24 hours a day. Steak and Shake by Southwest Airlines. Friendly nonstop service all across the country. Southwest Airlines, a symbol of freedom. Cardinals are ready to go. They lead the NL Central Division by four games over the Cubs and the Reds. And the starting lineup for the Milwaukee Brewers is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Guy was a pain in the neck last night. He's hitting 321 overall. Clark will lead it off. Brady bats first. And it's Cirillo batting in the number two spot with Jenkins, Lee, Russ Brannion, Junior Spivey, Bill Hall, Chad Moeller, and Victor Santos is the pitcher. He bats ninth. Cardinals have a little different look defensively, and we'll go around the horn. When we get a moment, as Chris Carpenter, who celebrates his 30th birthday today, takes on the Milwaukee Brewers the second time in his last three starts. Coming off a complete game against the Cubs, and he misses down and away with ball one to Brady Clark. Chris Carpenter is half of the advance auto parts and Rico pitching matchup. One ball, one strike. Oh, he's been outstanding. He's already beaten Milwaukee one time. You see the three and one record. He's uh, three career starts. ERA under three against Milwaukee, one and one. And coming off that complete game shutout against the Cubbies, he's throwing the ball very well. Here's his one one to Clark. It's on the corner. One ball, two strikes. Jerry Davis, the home plate umpire today with Bill Hahn, Doug Ennings, and Bruce Dreckman. Joining Jerry Davis as the men in black. One ball, two strikes. Nice size crowd on a Wednesday. Best weather day we've had of the last couple. It's supposed to rain a little later tonight and then maybe tomorrow as the Cardinals will wrap up this series with the Brewers before the team. The Cardinals head to Atlanta. And that's a 110 start tomorrow. The makeup game for Martin. That's a good start. 
strikeout begins the day for Chris Carpenter and for Brady Clark. We look at the defense. It's so Taguchi out and left today with Edmonds and Walker joining him in the outfield. And Abraham Nunez, what a big hit he had last night in his second at bat, driving in a run with two out. He's at short, and Eckstein gets the day off. Good start for Carpenter with that strikeout, but the real key is to watch him stay down in the strike zone, work both sides of the plate, change in speed, but when he's down, he gets the ground balls. With one out, and at the knees to Jeff Cirillo. He's off to a 229 start. Also has good success against Carpenter, five for nine. It's been a thorn in the Cardinals' side as he returns back to Milwaukee. He went 0 and 2. Gary Davis appealed down to first. Cirillo now Jenkins on deck. The Cardinals come in with a record of 13 and 5. And as I mentioned, a four game lead already in the division. With one out, nobody on the 0 2 from Carpenter. Got him on the inside corner, and Cirillo's going to argue now. And he may be begging his way out of this game. There, but for the grace of Jerry Davis, goes Cirillo, and somehow he stays in the game after arguing from this pitch. I'm sure he thought it was low. That's two up, two strikeouts. Cirillo is gone, and Jenkins steps in. You already tell a much different strike zone from last night, and that bodes well for the pitchers. Jenkins strike one. Nothing but strikes except for the first pitch of the day from Carpenter. Jenkins is at two home runs hitting 254. Carpenter is matched up against that good right hander Victor Santos. Tall righty is one and zero with an ERA of just over one and a half. Good breaking ball strike two. And he's got good stuff today that everything's staying down sharpness to the breaking ball the cutters coming in fastball sinking. The base is empty, two out. That fastball rides up and away. Dave Duncan has had a good week. He has seen his starters go deep into ball games last night. I know it was a struggle at times for Supon, but he got another victory. The bullpen very good. High again, two and two. You've got Carpenter, what he did a week ago. And in the middle of that, Mark Mulder and what he did over the weekend. He was fantastic in that 10 inning shutout win over the Astros. So no matter what starter is out there, you kind of get excited about the, the results. Got him. He struck out the side in the first inning. That's the way to back up what Carpenter did a week ago, the complete game effort against the Cubs. And this is the way he begins. Keeping the ball down. Struck out Clark. Got Cirillo looking. And then took care of Jenkins. Cards come to bat against Victor Santos. No score. Mark Redzelonic walks to the plate. The starting lineup for the Cardinals is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Walker will back him up. Then Pujols, Edmonds sits in the cleanup spot. Roland, Sotaguchi, Abraham Nunez, Yadier Molina, and then Chris Carpenter. Jerry Davis, the home plate umpire, as Santos, the pitcher, was about to throw his last warm-up pitch, was already calling for Redzelonic to get up to the plate. He's going to try to keep this game moving today. Ball one high. Oh, that's those speed-up rules. Rizalonic's had good success against Santos. Overall, as a Cardinal, he's hitting 271 as he fouls that one back off the front of the press box, and the count evens at a ball and a strike. Victor Santos, the young right-hander. This pitching matchup is brought to you by Rico. Uh, he's pitched very well against the Cardinals, one-on-one -on -one record, ERA under two. He had a no decision earlier where he gave up only four hits in eight innings. Brezelana gets into one to left center field. Back at the track, at the wall. Brezelana gets his first as a Cardinal. And St. Louis jumps on top one to nothing. About eight out of 17 in his career for Grudzelonic against Victor Santos. I guess that's a little bit of success and now punctuating that for his first Cardinal home run. But some guys just 
do him well. That ball out over the plate, it's down, but he goes out there and rifles it. Talk about Grizzolonic being a gap hitter. He'll go to left center and right center. This time he finds the first row of the seats. Now it's Larry Walker. He rips one into center field. That ball's going to scoot. Walker's thinking about a double. He will test the center fielder and make it. With nobody out, testing Brady Clark, a homer, a double, and the cards have come out of the gate swinging. Well, that's great to see. You know, when your closer goes down, it has a negative effect on the team. But the one way to counteract it is to put runs on the board. Line drive out into pretty well center, just shading right a little bit. And once it took Brady Clark that time to put his back to it, he was going to get it all the way to second base. Grizzolonix, pitch again. Ball was somewhat down, but it's over the middle of the plate and hammered hard. So two batters, two well struck balls. And now Albert has another RBI chance. He's up to 15 with his five home runs, and that was a 59 footer out of the hand of Victor Santos. Let's talk uh, about the situation you just touched on. They lost their closer, the Cardinals did. Hopefully, it won't be more than a 15 day trip to the disabled list for Isringhausen who was off to his best start as a Cardinal really pitching well you know at some point guys are going to go down and it's how you respond to that adversity and I don't think anybody expects the Cardinals to wilt under the pressure of not having one of the best closers in the game available to him in fact Tony La Russa said today at a breakfast one thing he's learned is to dwell on who you have and not who you don't have the Cardinals have some guys down there like Tavares and King that can close games. Yeah, I think Tony's looking forward to the challenge. And it used to drive me crazy when a manager would say, I bring in my closer and then I stop managing. Sometimes you have to manage more with them when they don't have their good stuff. Pujols trying to get on top of that pitch. It was up, and now he's in the hole one and two. And I don't think there's any doubt that in the early going, the pitchers have been carrying a lot of the workload and doing an outstanding job. So this is one way the hitters can respond and say, okay, guys, you've done a great job. Now ride our coattails for a while. Don't have a closer? Well, don't have any they don't have any safe situations. Just blow the opposition out. One ball, two strikes on Albert. And that's chopped foul outside third. The Cardinals as a club are hitting 243. And you have to believe that that average is going to continue to go up, up, up. The league is led by Colorado, which is no big surprise, at 303. The Cardinals are in the bottom four. And this lineup is too talented, too good to stay in that spot. The Cardinals do, however, have the third best ERA as a team in the National League. And defensively, they're number three fielding percentage in the National League. So once the hitting catches up, this is a team that's already put together one of the best records in baseball and has a four game lead in the division. Here's a one two and he goes the other way. How pretty was that Walker is going to have to hold a third Jenkins falls down as he gets it back into the infield. It's first and third with nobody out as Pujols adds to his 311 average. Cardinals have almost hit for the cycle after three batters. The defense brought to you by Auto Tire. Go around the horn. Lee, Clark, and Jenkins in the outfield. Cirillo, Hall, Spivey, and Brannion on the infield. Moeller catching Santos. You know, sometimes you see a right fielder that will use their entire body and hurl themselves to the ground in an effort to get their body behind it. That was not the case there with Jenkins as he repaired a divot where his cleat caught in the grass and kind of pulled him down. Check on Pujols who had to scramble to get back. Edmonds is at 245. Five homers, 11 RBIs. Still waiting to find that good stroke and get into a groove. That was close. It was. I think Albert's going to go out there and kick out there. The gra the dirt is kind of wet right now, and he almost slipped and almost cost him. So shorten up just a bit or say, okay, I found my limit.
First and third, nobody out. Edmonds trying to make this an even bigger and better first inning for Chris Carpenter. And that's going to do it into left center field to score one. Pujols will dig for third. It's an RBI double for Edmonds as they throw toward third base. Still nobody out. Two nothing Cardinals and the merry-go-round has started. Mike Maddox coming out here. There you see pitch out away and just discipline hitting going with the pitch and finding an outer gap. So Walker comes around and scores. And Pujols kind of coast in over to third base. Sees the play in front of him, so he knows he can go to third. He also knows he can't go beyond it. And you can see why when the Milwaukee Brewers came to town, Ned Yost and others with their organization were talking about how good a team Tony La Russa has to manage this season. This, in my opinion, and this will be up for debate, and I'm sure we'll talk about it as the year wears on. This is a better Cardinal team overall than the ball club we got to enjoy thoroughly throughout 2004, in my opinion. And a team that won 105 games during the regular season is rolling. Fouls it straight back. Joe, I know you and I have touched on this in the past. It's very difficult to, to really compare teams because... I think this team has the ability to be better than that one, and yet it may not reach the 105 win total, but but it still doesn't represent that it's not better. That's the way I feel. They may not win 105 games, but in a postseason series, this will be a team, provided guys are healthy, than the ball club that finished the year last year when Carpenter was on the shelf, Morris was not feeling well with his shoulder, and there were some issues. This is, uh, in my opinion, a team that's improved from a year ago, and last year was a memorable season. Second and third, nobody out. The 1-1 pitch. Roland checked his swing. Gary Davis has not appealed down to first, and the count's 2-1. Mulder makes a big difference. And I think, you know, Carpenter, as you saw last year, was the number one. He was injured. But everybody kind of settles in and feels that much more relaxed. Let Carpenter and Mulder really take the pressure off of Matt, and Marquis, and Supon. But they all can go out there and compete. And Matt is much healthier this year. Here's a 2-1 pitch. Ooh, one after one that was up. And the count's two balls, two strikes. Santos, in his last start, was against the Giants. He threw a complete game and only allowed one run and threw only 97 pitches. So you would have thought he'd be well rested coming into this start. And this is on his normal day of rest or day of, to pitch. There's the effort in his last time out. Different story today. And here comes a 2 2 to Roland. High and tight. Full count on deck is Taguchi. Young pitcher, good arm, but you tell you can duplicate those good starts time after time after time. You're still the enigma. Will Taguchi get a chance with the bases loaded? What's Roland going to do with a full count after he steps out and calls time? Roland is at 246. Three homers, 10 RBIs. Chance to get a couple more with a hit. Just missed the inside corner. The bases are loaded for Taguchi. Still nobody's been retired. And the Cardinals are down to their sixth spot in the order. Shrewell going to talk to his pitcher, trying to, just, hey, just throw strikes. Maybe he'll be in right at somebody. Taguchi, Joe has more RBIs than three of the Cardinal regulars. Regular starters. It's an impressive stat. A guy has got a home run, seven RBIs. And in his career with the bases loaded, six out of 12. Look at 14 RBIs in those six hits. It is staggering to think of the progress oh. that So Taguchi has made in three years. He went from a guy that looked completely overmatched playing in the big leagues here after having a solid career in Japan to a guy that's a very capable bench player and a good spot starter for a 
good major league club. And now that's to his credit because he changed some things, has a different approach, and he is a real weapon now for Tony La Russa. And now you find a lot of National League scouts talking about he's like one of the perfect bench type players and what he can do for you defensively you know fundamentally so sound run and now, the bases yeah and now he's contributing offensively and showing that he's going to be you know very competitive and and he will battle you in that batter's box he's in the hole hero and two Nunez on deck and Taguchi pops it up that'll be the first out the infield fly rule in effect one away base is loaded and Nunez is coming up I know Watching you and Dan last night, the Cardinals had a number of chances to bust the game open and just never could get that big hit. The guy at the plate got one of the bigger hits in the victory, and that was Abraham Nunez coming up and delivering a two-out RBI hit to make it 5-3, and that's the way it ended. Yeah, he stranded 14 runners, the Cardinals did last night. And Nunez, who came in, part of a double switch got a couple of bats and that last one was a big insurance run. You got some runners out there now. With the bases loaded Nunez was leaning back trying to rip it. That's strike one. Santos to his credit all of a sudden now he's tried to get real soft. The thing he was firing up there was coming back off the bats harder. He got to Gucci to pop up on an off speed pitch way out in front. There he got ahead with Nunez, was something the same way. Go soft, don't get hard. Good pitch, strike two. Santos is trying to bail himself out of a big first inning jam to keep the Brewers in the game. Carpenter is certainly in that category. If you're Milwaukee, you don't want to fall too far behind. So this is a big batter. For Victor Santos. Abraham Nunez spoils it. It's still on two. Chris Carpenter wondering how big this first inning is going to be. And Joe, a lot of pitchers like Mulder talked about it and his one nothing game. They went 10 innings. The Carpenter, same way. Sometimes they get into these games and they don't like these big offensive innings. They just want, okay, I got a lead. I want to get back out there. Here's an 0-2. And he has watched it drop into the dirt. It's gone home run Grudzelonic. Double for Walker, a hustling double. Pujols with a line drive. Imagine that. Base it into right. Edmonds with an RBI double into left center. Roland walk to load him up. Taguchi popped up. And it's one and two on Nunez. Foul. I like the way Nunez stands up there. He's right on top of the plate, and the guy who's ready for a pitch, especially on the inside part, and he can get out and jerk the ball. Yes. He's, a, he's another excellent spare part because of his ability to play second and, and shortstop, but he's had a lot of pitch inning experience. It's not easy, and it's something that you know you don't wake up and say, I want to be a pinch hitter but you go out there in your battle he's fourth last year in the National League in pinch hit appearances with 62. Here comes a one two pitch just missed the outside corner. So it's two and two. Had 11 career home runs but he knows he's not a home run hitter. Two and two. Nunez grounds one to second. Might be two. Not hit hard, and they can only get one. Pujol scores, and it's three nothing Cardinals. So Nunez puts the ball in play and makes it a three run first to this point. Must be a little, little tough being a young player and having Scott Rowland bear down on you. You know he's going to always be hustling and ready to take you out. The middle infielder's got to have a little corner of his eyes peeking and saying, uh oh, look at this big bull coming down on me. In this case, it was Bill Hall who had to get up and over. 
the sliding roll and couldn't get anything on the throw to first and Nunez beat it easily now Molina how about a two out RBI hit for Yadier breaking ball for a strike show you the maturity of Yadier I told him today I said you know hey you're hitting in Mala Suerte bad luck and every time you hit the ball good it's a right at somebody other times just relax he said no we're winning don't worry about my batting average we're winning he's done so much to help from behind the plate and that's into right center field it'll hang up for Jenkins and the Cardinals come up with three in the first in the top of the first inning the Milwaukee Brewers struggled against Chris Carpenter in fact he struck out the side on the other side of the fence the Cardinals went to work they came out ready to go Homer double single double Cardinals get three and after one behind Chris Carpenter lead three zip half price nights that sounds good select dates in 2005 all fans can purchase terrace reserved and upper terrace seats for half price Thursday May 5th against San Diego is the next fan half price night get terrace reserve seats for just 950 upper terrace for 450 Call 314 421 400 or visit stlcardinals.com that one gets through that short hop that stayed down and it's an error on Scott Rowland so Rowland tried to pick it couldn't come up with it and makes error number one you see he tried to go in there and get the right hop and it just kind of stayed down on him as he was waiting for that short hop. It submarines him, scored an error on Rowland, and Carlos Lee is still looking for his first hit against the Cardinals. He's 0 for 17 now. Cardinals are playing in their 19th game and all of the action that Rowland has had game after game. That's his first error of the season. And Russ Brannion is looking at the world through rose colored glasses as he takes a ball low. Everything just looks great that way. Crystal clear. Crystal clear. Really experimenting with these different lenses and you know there's this is the one that it just sharpens everything up in day baseball. Here's a 1 0. Brandon's going to bunt. And that thing checks up, and Carpenter and Molina look at each other. It's two on with nobody out. That thing stopped, didn't bounce, and could not have been laid out there any better by Brandon. And all of a sudden, the Brewers are in business with an error and a bunt hit. Now you see it right there. Watch you look at the thing. It's going to bounce up high, and it backed up and stayed down. You know, Brandon on April the 8th laid down his first sacrifice bunt of his professional career. He went 4,444 plate appearances without a sack bunt. Now he's got a, now now he's he's, got a bunt base hit. He's hooked. <laughs> yeah. He's obsessed. Junior Spivey now with two on and nobody out. He checked a swing on ball one. Spivey is hitting 213. He has hit three home runs, driven in eight. It's Bill Hall after Spivey and then Moeller. Bottom part of the order trying to do some damage and get the Brewers on the board down by three. Here's a 1 0. Now he wants to bunt. One ball, one strike. Spivey struck out one time last night and already on the young season has 24 strikeouts. We first saw him with Arizona. Part of that big deal which involved Richie Sexton going to the Diamondbacks and that was a big deal for the Diamondbacks and it didn't work out at all. 1-1. One, one. Sexton ended up having surgery. Now he's in a Seattle uniform and Milwaukee got a boatload of young talent. Yeah, they got all the talent. They got about four regulars, a, you know, a starting pitcher, a relief pitcher. And that really bides them a lot of time with a very, very young and talented uh, farm system. Includes tomorrow's starter, Capuano. Here's a 2 1. That's off the end of the bat. 2 and 2. So two on, nobody out. Two balls, two strikes on Spidey. I mentioned the Cardinals and Brewers will finish this thing, this series, tomorrow. A 110 start. 
It's the makeup day. And the Cardinals head off to Atlanta. Here comes a 2-2. Full count. Atlanta right now a half game out in the NL East behind the Marlins. By the way, if you haven't looked in a while, the Cardinals have the best record in the National League. The last time they had a 13 and 5 record was 1982. It's also the same year they last opened in Houston and the last year they won a World Series. 3 2. They had that 13 and 5 record with the benefit of a 12 game winning streak. And when you talk about the Brewers, that was the team's opponent in the World Series back in 1982. Harvey's wall bangers against Whitey's team. Whitey ball. Here's a 3 2. And Spivey stays up there. Carpenter did not walk a man. Actually, he did in the ninth inning in that start against the Cubs. I forgot about that last walk, but he struck out six, Al, and allowed nothing on seven hits. If you remember, too, 82 was that big trade between Milwaukee and St. Louis. Kind of helped out both teams, got them to the World Series. Another 3 2. Got him on the outside corner. And Al, this is a stab in the dark and a guess at best. But I think Spivey was bothered more by Carlos Lee at second base than Carpenter was because Spivey was standing there frozen on a fastball right down the middle. Yeah, I think you're right. Chris Carpenter had to make a pitch, comes back, and just a sinking fastball and right there. But here, watch Carlos Lee. Looked like he started to take off. Neither one of the infielders, and when I, th I think Spivey might have been caught in between trying to say, should I call timeout or not? But I think you're, I agree with you. Carpenter, you expected Carpenter to step off and look Lee back. Carpenter brought it to the plate, and Spivey was caught watching as ball one misses to Bill Hall. Bill's hitting. Only 190. 364 on the road. That's off the end of the bat, a ball and a strike. Mentioned earlier, this is a great crowd on a Wednesday afternoon against Milwaukee. Yeah, they, Looks like by the end, that will be packed. Well, they had 38,000 sold, and I think with the nicer weather today and the way the Cardinals are playing, that uh, be a huge walk up. There's only 20. Just a little less than 26,000 sold for tomorrow afternoon's game. Nicely blocked by Molina, two and one. Get an extra hour of work in. Then you come down here and watch the Cardinals. Molina. Just forget work altogether. I thought Matheny went to San Francisco. You know, it's funny. You know, it, Matheny's mentioned at least once every telecast for good reason. I was talking to Eli Marrero last year when he was with Atlanta. And he was talking about Matheny and then talking about Yadier Molina. Here comes a 2-1 to Hall. That's hard hit. Pujols, Nunez, Carpenter. That was beautiful. 3-6-1. A fantastic double play turned by the Cardinal infield. Pujols, Nunez, Carpenter. Still 3-0. You need money. We look at the angle from the left field corner on that double play turned by Pujols to Look. Nunez and on to Carpenter. There was a lot of things going on in that play and they were all very, very good. And it was a lot tougher than the Cardinal infielders made it look. You know, we always talk about the glove of Albert Pujols and Albert's a guy who had that tear in his elbow and a couple years ago was told not to throw the ball anywhere and the Cardinals wanted his bat in the lineup and they tried to protect because of that elbow. The throws he's making from the first base position down to second have been lightning quick and dead on accurate. 
Carpenter's gone one out. For one year. Well, first of all, let's go back to the, see the play and start from the beginning. It really was a tough situation. Look how he leads Nunez perfectly. Then he races back to the bag, but his pitcher was there covering. And because Carpenter's six foot six, he can stretch out there. But Albert would have been there if needed. But Carpenter did his job. You don't always have to be stationary. So that was a tough play from the scoop with the runner going by him. Then he led his shortstop perfectly, raced back to the bag, but his pitcher was there covering. And you know, it just, uh, and Nunez, you know, threw the ball right over the bag, wasn't sure who was going to end up receiving it, but it was right where either one of them could have gotten it. Now, Greg Zolanik, who homered his first time, takes a strike. It's just so, it's such a neat angle. That first angle we showed that gives you the idea of how accurate that throw was, but then the footwork of Nunez to time that catch come across the bag with all of his momentum going to first. It's just pretty to watch and you realize how talented those guys are up the middle turning double plays. It's something that uh, I don't care how long I practiced. I know I could never do something like that. And it's stuff that they can do it in their sleep. You know, you could blindfold them they, and they could touch that bag and know where they are. Fred Zolanik just owns Santos. He's two for two today. And he's on with one out here in the second. Best damn sports show, period, is the greatest nightly sports show on television. Host Chris Rose, co-host John Sally. It'll come your way tonight at 10.30 on FSN Midwest. Greg Zalonik has homered. He has now singled. And Mark is now 9 out of 18, hitting 500 against Victor Santos as Walker takes a strike. Fred Zolanik gets his lead. Held on by Branion. And Walker clunks one to first. That'll get Greg Zolanik down to second. One unassisted, two out. An RBI chance for Pujols. Al, have you looked much at the other divisions around baseball and seen what the Baltimore Orioles are doing? 14 and 7 and a three game lead in the AL East. And then you've got the Dodgers in Arizona at the top of the NL West. And the White Sox have a four game lead in the AL Central over Minnesota. And Burley's been doing his thing, he's been outstanding. Like the time of some of his games, one hour, 39 minutes. He is so good. Left-hander from St. Louis. See if Albert can knock home another. In the air to left, there's a hit. Here comes Greg Zolanik. They'll test the arm of Lee. Albert, another RBI, and it's 4-0 in the second. And Pujols didn't waste any time. Two outs, so Kendall's going to be even more aggressive, but give a credit to Kendall recognizing that the outfield arm strength, and you're going to run on Lee. Another ball well struck. Line drive out there. Grizzlonic with two outs. He knows all he has to do is run until he's stopped. And with Albert hitting, you're usually going to end up stopping after you touch home plate. And it's not a small thing. I know Walker made it out, but, but he at least man. advanced the runner. It's a productive out. And now Edmonds rolls one to first for Brandon, and the inning is over. But Pujols is two for two today. We came on the air talking about Pujols. He's helped turn a great double play. And he drives in a run to make it 4 nothing Cardinals after two. First. This date in baseball history, Cardinal manager Gabby Street is fined for violating the National League policy, which prohibits talking to spectators. They were a little less fan friendly back in the 1930s, evidently. The whole stock market thing and everybody was mad at each other. <laughs> it's 4 nothing as Chad Moeller grounds to short. Nunez to his left. Timed that well. Got a good arm. One out. And that means that Carpenter can face Santos. But the base is empty, one down, and a four to nothing lead. He's been outstanding, struck out four, and induced a double play. And then now that uh, six three, 
accounting for all the outs. One hit allowed. That was raced in part of the double play. Santos is 0 for 7 on the season, takes a ball. Currently in an 0 for 22 stretch, dating back to last season. 1 and 1 from Carpenter. Cardinals have Marquis going tomorrow against Capuano. That ball is in a dangerous area as Walker was playing in. And a fair ball. Rather nonchalant going for that down the right field line. Two out on Saturday, May 7th. The Cardinals take on San Diego at 115. All fans receive a coupon for free admission to Six Flags for children 48 inches and under. Is any mail on that? I don't, they don't know oh, where to find it. It's children now. It says children 48 okay. inches and under. Because remember the, your discussion on whether it was adults 48 or. I mean, but what defines a child? I mean, there's no it's nobody childlike. has an ID an ID that says I am a child. You just have to be 48 inches or under. Strike one to Brady Clark. Ball one to Brady Clark. Clark struck out his first time up while Carpenter was on his way to striking out the side. Two and one. Carpenter is without a doubt in the category of a power right-hander. Guy who's very smart, knows how to keep the ball down. Works fast. We like him on these 12-10 starts. Yes, we? we do. Tim Garcia nodding his head over there like he's busy during the other parts of the day. Come on. Couldn't have been listening to us. You don't like our company for more than two and a half hours? Here's a 2 2 to Clark. Defensive swing. Pujols will take it himself. Carpenter rolls through another frame. He looks to be on today. So do the Cardinal hitters. Roland, Taguchi, and Nunez coming up. 4 0 for the guys in one. Scott Rowland will lead it off for the Cardinals. Scott drew a walk to load the bases back in the first. Taguchi popped up. Nunez drove home a run with a force out. That made it 3 0. The Cardinals got an RBI hit with two out by Albert Pujols to make it 4 0. And that's where we sit here in the third inning. Santos deals and Rowland fouls it away 0 and 2. And a nice play. This crowd is subdued to this point. A lot of them, I would imagine, were here last night. It was a long night, but well worth it. The Cardinals won the ball game as Roland chops after that pitch. It was up with an 0-2 count. It stays 0-2. Let's go back and watch Moeller and see where he called for that pitch. Got it up there, try and tie him up, but I think he wanted it more up and in. Either way, he got the second strike. And the 0-2 is up there again. Roland lays off. Ball one. Scott at 246. Couple other games going on today. Pittsburgh at home leading Houston 2-0 after four. Atlanta and the Mets, 2-1 Atlanta. In the third, that's a little flare down the right field line, and Spivey pulls it in in foul territory, one away. This portion of Cardinal Baseball on FSM Midwest brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. We're ready in advance by Aflac. Ask about it at work. And by Rico, how well do you print, copy, scan, fax? How well do you share? The base is empty. It's Taguchi who missed a chance to fatten up on his RBI total of seven. The base is loaded. Nobody out. He popped up his last time. This time back to Santos. Two out. And Abraham Nunez will step to the plate. Only one game going on in the AL, and it looks like they're delayed in the first inning. Baltimore at Boston. Otherwise, night baseball. One thing the Cardinals have never struggled with 
over the years when they want to put a daylight game on the schedule. They have no problem filling this park. To the point where you wonder why they don't have more. Because really, if you compare it to an average Tuesday or Wednesday night, I'd imagine they get better crowds these 12, 10, or 1, 15 starts than they do at night. Especially early in the season when you Weather can be a problem. It was very cold last night. Just a damp day at the ballpark with no rain. One ball, two strikes. Kids are back in school. Might have something to do with the fact that we draw so well from eight states that uh, you give the outer towners a chance to get in here. See a night game, maybe catch a day game, and then head home. Right. Two and two. That makeup date is tomorrow, and it will be interesting to see what kind of a crowd shows up at 110 at the tail end of this homestand. So if you had a ticket for Monday's game, that is good for tomorrow's 110 start. Nunez into left field. Lee coming to get it. The Cardinals go in order for the first time today. We go to the fourth inning. Carpenter back to the hill. He and the cards on top, 4-0. Higher standards. Chris Car America. Higher standards. Chris Carpenter's only allowed one hit. Pitched around an error. Did that in the second. Part of a 3-6-1 double play that got him out of trouble and a breaking ball. Has Cirillo frozen for strike one. Good tight breaking ball that Chris Carpenter throws to the plate. And that one drops low, one ball, one strike. You know, you can change speeds on it. That first one kind of get ahead, breaking ball. And then he'll tighten it up and throw a little harder. Fast balls upstairs, two and one. Got underneath it a little bit. Two, three, and four hitters for the Brewers. Cirillo, Jenkins, and Lee. Anybody gets on, Branion. Fastballs fouled away, two and two. A lot of people talk about this Brewers organization that they may not finish in the top half of the division this year, but they should get better and better with the way they're stocked in the minor leagues. We'll wait and see if that talent gets to the big leagues and flourishes under Ned Yost. If they get a winner in Milwaukee, as that's tipped to keep it two and two. Well, they've got to have a little luck with their pitchers but they do have some really outstanding young position players they've got new ownership there is willing to spend a little more money 2-2 two -two pitch got him kept it down and away Cirillo strikes out for the second time today and that's five strikeouts as we go back to that strike one curveball and our hot pitch of the game brought to you by Hardy's Chris Carpenter getting ahead time after time and when you can do it with a breaking ball you know that's the real key because how many times we talk about a guy can't get his breaking ball over and so then you can kind of push that aside anytime you see a spin you don't swing at it but when you get the breaking ball over then all of a sudden they know you have to guard against all four of his pitches. Great start to this one for Carpenter. The only hit was the bunt hit by Branion. That's all. And he was trying to sacrifice. 1 0. Jenkins over the top of it. Jenkins has got that all or nothing swing from time to time where he can launch a ball. He swings through a lot of pitches as well. One ball, one strike here. Strike two. Because of that good couple breaking balls, then he throws a fastball and looks like it's about five or six miles an hour harder than it's thrown. And then he's got two strikes on you, and you don't know if you're going to get the cutter, change up, fastball, or the curveball, back door. And Jenkins is fooled totally. Thought about running, but then said, ah, why? Molina throws it away as he was attempting to throw it around the horn, and so they just say, forget throwing it around the horn. First puts down a slider, then he wants a fastball in, then a fastball away, and then here's the curveball. Keeps it down because he's ahead in the count, and that's pitching. 
So two out, six strikeouts on the day, and Lee fouled that one off his foot. I really like the guy that the Brewers, really both guys, the Brewers gave up to get Carlos Lee. But Sednik is the commodity that's so hard to find, a guy that gets on base, a good outfielder, a guy that can run, and Luis Vizcaino was a good part of that bullpen for Milwaukee, and a lot of teams, including the Cardinals, would like to get their hands on him. Yeah. Uh, you know, Carlos Lee is a bona fide bopper in the middle of the order. But I kind of, you know, Pod Sednik, he thought he was kind of a steal. Remember, they took him off the waiver wires from, from uh, Seattle. I thought he should have been the rookie of the year in one year. And really a good hustling player you could build around. That's knocked down by Carpenter. He has time, gets his man, another one, two, three inning. Carpenter is rolling. And so are the Cardinals at 13 and 5. Today they lead the Brewers 4-0 after three and a half. As you look at Marquee, we tell you that tomorrow the Cardinals and Brewers series will continue and conclude at the end of the day. A day game on the air at 12.30. With Cardinals tonight, is that what we're bound to say? We're obligated to say Cardinals tonight at 12.30 in the afternoon. That's on FSN Midwest. Cardinals today. That's what I thought. 1-0 to Molina. Fouled straight back. Had a pretty good rip at that pitch. One ball, one strike. Yadier fly to right. His first time up, his average of 140. Eight hits and 57 at bats. Working hard to try to figure it out. While at the same time, I'm sure fighting the urge to press and compound the problems. Well, that's it. Yeah, sometimes you you get jumpy in that plate. Three balls and a strike. Pitches up. You try and go out there and jump at it. Al McRae will work with him, try to keep him centered. He hits the ball hard, you know, he it's right at somebody. And if he hits one in the infield where somebody knocks it down, they're gonna throw him out. That's low, a leadoff walk. So Yadier is on, and that gives Carpenter a chance to bunt. That's the second walk of the day, passed out by Victor Santos. We're down to 70, Al, on the old countdown clock. Out on the right field wall. Kenny Daly is going to remove the, the number this afternoon. 70 games remaining before the first one at the new Bush Stadium. And the Cardinals would like to celebrate taking that number 70 off. Hello, Chris. About an eight to nothing lead when Ken does that later on in the seventh. That's strike one on Carpenter, who got a whiff of that pitch from Victor Santos. And you want to throw the ball up because it's very difficult to bunt. And people stab at that ball, or it's a good chance of popping it up. A smart idea. This carpenter's kind of showing bunt, and it looks like maybe the slug bunt will be on, so a pitcher can kind of throw to first and see if the hitter gives it away. On the outside part, strike two. Almost takes a perfect bunt to get. Molina down to second, so you could see them maybe with an 0-2 count. The defense still thinks he's bunting, but do the butcher boy that you have to hit down on the ball. Santos taking forever to get a sign from Bowler. The 0-2. Nice pick by the Milwaukee catcher. That's about all he could do is stab at it with a backhand, and he caught it clean. And with the modern day catcher's glove, you got a little more of a chance as it's a hinge glove. 
but those old fashioned ones that just look like a pizza pan with a hole in the middle. If, you know, you have no prayer with that one. On one and two, Molina goes and Carpenter gets it down. That worked to perfection as Carpenter makes good on the sacrifice, one unassisted, and after getting the tag on the chest, Carpenter looked back at Santos. I don't think he liked the way he got tagged, but this one was a beauty from Chris. I got the ball in fair territory, the barrel slightly higher than the handle, and you gotta make sure you keep that bat in fair territory with two strikes so it stays fair when you make contact. Then have your hands soft so when the point of contact, you just let it come back ever so slightly into your hands to deaden it. Average is going up, up, up for Grudzelanik, who had a great spring. As Bill Hall, the shortstop, was thinking about getting in behind Molina, so Santos spun around. Marks at 295, and today two for two with a homer, a single. He has scored twice. And in his career against Santos, he's hitting 500, nine out of 18, ball one. A little oddity in the early going for Grizzolanic as all of his hits have been in Cardinal victories. He doesn't have a hit yet in a loss. So as goes Mark Grizzolanic, so go the Cardinals. One ball, no strikes. Looking for his third hit already. We're only in the fourth inning. He takes a strike. It's one and one. Cardinals called up Carmen Cali, the left-hander, to take the spot opened up when Isringhausen went on the disabled list. The strained muscle in his abdomen. So Tony La Russa, if he's forced to try to find somebody to close today's game, will select from one of many as Flores got it done last night and looked good, Allen, doing it. He wasn't intimidated by the situation at all. He gave up the base hit and then got the double play ball to end it. I remember, and that's even more impressive because for a reliever sitting down there, when Jason comes into the game, you think your day's through. So to restart the engines and... And you know when you warm up on the mound and everybody's waiting around for you, you usually say you're ready one batter too soon. The two one in the air to right center field that ball's going to plug the gap. A ground rule double into score is Molina. Grudzelanik is three for three. He's a triple shy of hitting for the cycle and the Cardinals add to their lead. It's five to nothing. A walk, a bunt, and a double, and the Cardinals now lead by five. Ball out away from him. He's been spraying around. We talk about a gap hitter, and he has demonstrated that today. Home run to left center, the double to right center, and a base hit up the middle. Walker with an RBI chance. Larry has a double, a run scored, and he's grounded out as he takes strike one. Last cycle, John Mabry against the Rockies back in 96. And he did it in order. Went yep. Single, double, triple, home run in that order. Natural. Here's an 0-1. Walker tied up a bit. It's 0-2. So well, the Cardinal bats are starting to come around a little bit. How about Larry Walker? He's already spoken terms that if the Cardinals win the World Championship this year, he'll retire. No, flat out will retire if they win. And if not? If they're not, they might get talked into coming back. Runner at second, one out. Walker takes ball one high. I have learned, I guess maybe the hard way, <laughs> that the retirement talk I pay no attention to whatsoever. Uh, well, he's a young, he's younger than Clemens. You know, he's he's sincere. I don't doubt it. At this point, he's sincere. <laughs> the Clemens situation, everybody's saying goodbye a couple of years ago. The World Series, the Yankees, the Marlins, they stopped the World Series. The Marlins are applauding for him in their dugout. 
Off he goes into the sunset only to reappear a few months later in a Houston Astros uniform. All it took was an H2, yeah. a new truck to get him out of retirement. And Andy Pettit with a multi-million dollar deal so they could run in the outfield together. Here comes a 1-2. Got him on the inside corner. Good pitch. Two out. And it's up to Albert. Second strikeout for Santos. We look at the box score. Rodzelanek has been perfect in the leadoff spot with Eckstein getting the day off. Walker, Albert, who's up now, has an RBI and a run scored. Two for two. And they have learned their lesson. How about that? First base open, left-handed hitting Jim Edmonds on deck. And Ned Yost has seen enough of Albert Pujols. He's getting Barry Bonds treatment here in the fourth inning. Jorge De La Rosa warming up in the bullpen in case they want to bring him in to face the left-handed swinging Edmonds. Fourth inning of a five to nothing game and Yost has called timeout on Albert. I think he's just going to let uh, Santos face Edmonds. Well, why don't we remind the folks then, Al, that the Center Automotive family donates $100 for every Cardinal home run hit this season for their win one for the kids charity fund and for Habitat of Humanity St. Louis. And Edmonds could get another 22 so far for the Cardinals. Now he wants to talk to his catcher. Victor is getting every penny's worth today of his time out on the mound. Now Hall, the shortstop, is going to come in and help with this secret strategy to get Jim Edmonds out. The umpire is going to come out. Before Davis can get over halfway out to the mound, the meeting breaks up. Okay, we throw a wild pitch to Jim because I really want to face Scott. First and second with two out. Edmonds. That gets away. How about a pass ball instead of the wild pitch? And it's second and third with two out. They say wild pitch. But I'm anxious to see the replay. Moeller didn't do much with that. Yeah, it looked like it did go off his glove. Yeah, that's got to yeah. be a pass ball. They said wild pitch, but I'm going to guess they will change that. Correction, pass ball. So now a hit can mean two. Gretzelanek at third and Pujols down at second. And that's low 2 and 0. Oh. Uh, now, Ned Yost will say, if he gets to 3-0, oh, I'll go ahead and put Edmonds on. And you'll get your wish. You get to face Scott. Santos. Ready with the 2-0. Oh. Edmonds has 12 RBIs on the season. Takes a strike as it comes back. Tail in action. Jimmy gives up on it. They've been pounding him inside, and he's given up on a lot of those pitches that tail back to the corner. Not always agreeing with the umpire, but. Edmonds has a double for an RBI. He went the other way in his first at bat in a three run first inning. Now he gets under it and pops it up. Lee from left field. Squeezes it. The Cardinals strand two. They get one. An RBI double by Greg Zolanek after four. Five-nothing Cardinals over Milwaukee. It's we welcome you back as this game goes into the fifth inning. And Al, what do you, what do you think so far? Chris uh, Carpenter's doing his thing, he's pal. He's doing his thing. He's been pitching outstanding. You just got to love it. He's a guy that can repeat that delivery. And with his six-foot-six, he's always throwing downward. And keeping the ball low and it usually speaks well. There is something out to be said for height. I mean, you see it with Mulder. When Mulder is on top of his pitches and Carpenter's the same, 
And then you're on top of that mound. There's already a downward angle going, and that's why you see a lot of these balls just beaten into the ground and why Carpenter and Mulder, some of those big guys, Randy Johnson, end up using their infield so much. Well, and you, you, a lot of scouts, you know, they always look for size, and that's one of the reasons. But Mulder on your left and Carpenter on your right are not examples of some guys that are tall that are just so thick and mechanical. These guys are fluid, good athletes, and they, you know, have the mechanics that are sound, stay on top, and deliver the ball in a downward plane. And then when a hitter just pounds it into the ground. Watch the leg drive that Carpenter gets. As that big body brings it to the plate on two and two to Russ Branion. And he rings up another. Seven strikeouts in four and a third innings for Chris Carpenter. He's using all of his pitches and everything. And you talk about the leg drive. Joe, you know, there's different ways of doing it. A lot of it's standing real tall, and then you can explode downward towards the plate. But there's those get ahead breaking balls once again. And he, you know, he just keeps on coming right at you, but everything strikes. His strikes. Spivey chops at a breaking ball and fouls at 0 2. Kind of look, he threw two breaking balls now to him. You know he's got the fastball, the cutter, his changeup, and a curveball that he can change speeds. He can throw a four-seam fastball also. Another curveball. <laughs> Spivey almost swung at a pitch that didn't even get to the plate. Well, and you see how he, that time, he's way ahead. He knows he's got a catcher that's excellent at blocking the ball, so he's not afraid to tighten the rotation a little bit. Kind of maybe even drop down ever so slightly and throw the, uh, the you know, the breaking ball in the dirt. And Spivey strikes out. You could see that coming. Only because of the pitch prior to that, you get that bouncer in there, and Spivey's ready to swing at it. So he just stayed with a breaking ball and gets his eighth strikeout. He started the day by striking out the side. Came back to get Spivey with two on and nobody out in the second. Of swinging and missing, eight strikeouts, two out now, and nobody on in the fifth with Bill Hall at the plate. That's put in play, and that's into the gap in right center field. Hall will have a two out double. That'll bring in Moeller as Carpenter gives up. His second hit of the day. Well, you know, sometimes you go up there and say, okay, he's been throwing an awful lot of get ahead breaking balls. I'm going to look for one. And, you know, it's not the, the tightest rotation on that. It's just trying to throw a strike. And when you look for it, he recognized it, hit it to the opposite field instead of being out in front of it. But more times than not, it worked to his advantage getting ahead. And very few times with. That's in the center field. Edmonds is coming on to play it on a hop, and that'll put Milwaukee on the board 5-1. to one. A flare into center. Off the bat of Moeller, who gets his first RBI of the season. Cardinal lead is down to four here in the fifth. It's only his second hit of the year for Moeller. And but I think, you know, once again, you're trying to sit there and say, okay, he's getting ahead of everybody. And now he throws a fastball, but it's kind of up in the zone a little bit. They're thinking, okay, I will try and get ahead. He's getting ahead of us. So I'm going to look for a strike. Didn't really hit it that well. He just hit it well enough to get over the infield and short enough of, of Edmonds in center. Wes Helms will come off the bench and bat for Santos, who goes four innings. Allows five runs on seven hits. Three walks, one of them an intentional walk. And two strikeouts. Along the way, he allowed the home run. That was to Greg Zalonik to start the day. Wes Helms, a former Atlanta Brave, takes a ball inside. Helms 0 for 11. So the Brewers starter is finished for the day. And Jorge De La Rosa, a left-hander, will come in. That's up the middle. Nunez did all he could, and it's two on with two out. 
Brady Clark coming up and the Brewers have a chance with a little two out rally to jump back into this game. That's Helms first hit of the year. And Nunez playing in the hole. Goes to his left and just a little bit short of it. Just eludes him. You know this is the second consecutive day that the Milwaukee starter only gives his manager four innings. That's why your bullpen gets killed. Brady Clark now two on two out. Strike one all of a sudden Carpenter has to get back to making good pitches bearing down and trying to get out of trouble. This is the first real serious rally that the Brewers have mounted against Chris Carpenter one run home two on two out. Breaking ball gets him to offer at it so and two. Tighten up that breaking ball here, battling. Saw three consecutive hits with two outs. And so now you see there, now he really pulls down on it. Starts up around the letters and breaks to the below the knees and hits the ground. So 0 and 2 on Brady Clark. And that's fouled the opposite way. Happy 69th wedding anniversary to Ed Curtis Jr. Juanita Curtis. Ed's 93. Juanita's 90. They watch you every game now. Wow. Congratulations. How about that? I'm 69 years. I know, and we know their son. We do. <laughs> Ed the third. I didn't think Ed the third is not 93, right? No. Yes, Lord. So congratulations to his parents. Wow. One ball, two strikes as Clark is able to check on that pitch in the dirt. There the runners on. The lead man is Moeller. The trailer is Helms. Not very good speed on the bases for the Brewers. A one-two pitch. Pop depth should end the inning. Walker is coming on to end it. And after all that, the Brewers get just the one. On three hits, Strand two have left three after four and a half. Cards up four. All right, here's Clark, the Cardinals and the Brewers. We give you what's on tap. It's brought to you by Budweiser. Tomorrow, 1230, Cardinals today on FSN Midwest. The Cardinals and Brewers wrap up their set. Will the Cardinals be going for the sweep after sweeping the Astros? After splitting with the Cubs. Be a nice, nice homestand. Jorge De La Rosa is on the mound for the Milwaukee Brewers. 2-0, seven appearances out of the bullpen. 241 average. He started the game against the Cardinals at the end of last season. And he also came over in the Arizona trade, the Sexton trade. Roland is the first to face him. Taguchi and Nunez will follow Scott to the plate. Off we go in the bottom of the fifth. Five to one Cardinals and the ball. Pretty good pitch. Called ball one to Scott. Scott takes a lot of those inside pitches. He doesn't flinch, so they look a lot better. Off the end of the bat, a cue shot. One out. One down in the fifth inning, and so Taguchi will step to the plate. They're already in the bottom of the seventh at Pittsburgh. The Pirates still lead two to nothing at home over Houston. It's 4-3 Atlanta over the Mets as they're in the fifth inning at Chase Stadium. You look at the improvement that Sotoguchi has made over the last three years. This should, if he can stay healthy, and no reason to believe he won't, this should be his easily his most productive year in the big leagues. As he's on with one out here in the fifth. And now couldn't be a nicer guy than Sotoguchi. His family, his wife is, is really a sweet lady. She speaks fluent English and you know, really even three years ago he understood just about everything you said to him. He couldn't speak the language and now he speaks enough that he has no problem communicating with anyone. They have a little son. 
he gets a chance to play today. So does the guy at the plate, Abraham Nunez, who takes high from De La Rosa. I would imagine that the first words that So Taguchi learned in English were not repeatable words that we would say on the broadcast, being around big league ball players, hearing the frustration. <laughs> oh, now I know what you're, where you're going. The 1 0 pitch is on the inside corner, 1 and 1. Yeah, when he was down in Memphis that first year, they taught him a lot of things that his wife had to correct. I would imagine. But he's one of those guys that just always has a smile on his face. He's happy to be at the park. And a real good bench player now for Tony La Russa. Check on the runner at first. I know you guys touched on it last night, but it's of all the things I think Tony La Russa does well, I would imagine the in-game moves that any manager makes by now because they're all so dissected. And you think about lefty, lefty matchups, trying to get through a ball game. That's one thing. But the way he utilizes his bench and the different spot starts that he finds for guys seems to keep this bench very fresh like a John Mabry or Nunez or Taguchi. You know sometimes a manager you know this team somewhat takes on the personality or he manages according to how the, he was as a player. And, and what I mean by that is a lot of times the the star player that goes to manage and just runs his regulars into the ground because that's what he did. He played every day grind it out every day. But when you got a guy like Tony who was was a bench player those guys know the value of keeping their bench players sharp because injury is going to happen if you don't play a guy or start him once a week every 10 days he has no chance when you have to play him for extended period. Taguchi takes off and Moeller has no chance. That's a stolen base for so Taguchi. His first of the year and his only first third. That's amazing. Team. Third stolen base for the Cardinals in 19 games. Well, and I mean, the games played differently, and this is one of those situations where the combination is the end of the order. You want to put somebody in scoring position. You don't have a, you know, like a, any thunder down there. So it's a calculated risk. You got a catcher that did not throw the ball well. The pitcher, you know, they, they defense the stolen base so much better now. But one of the things that they probably looked at as they look at his release time of the pitcher and if he has that release time that's kind of like it used to be a lot of more like one four to six where a lot of guys will start going down to one point two you know even a little bit lower well you can't outrun that baseball if the catcher has a good arm to the right side nice try by Nunez a race to the bag out there over the third is to Gucci two down. Yadier Molina coming up today following Midwest sports tonight today stay tuned to FSN Midwest we present our monthly edition of Cardinals magazine this month they take a closer look at Cardinal greats Bob Gibson and Albert Pujols Cardinals magazine today on FSN Midwest. We have the latitude of changing the name of Midwest Sports tonight to today. To the left side, two hops to Cirillo. The inning is over. Molina is 0 for 2. Taguchi is left stranded. The Cardinals have stranded six after five. 5-1 five St. Louis. Come first. This portion of Cardinal Baseball on FSN Midwest is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Jack invites you to come in and experience ciabatta. It's all about the bread. And by your local Chrysler Jeep dealers. Sun is out. A nice day in St. Louis. Temperature in the 60s. And Chris Carpenter is into the sixth. Allowing one run on four hits. He has struck out eight. Come on, Daly. Your day's over. <laughs> We're waiting for Ken Daly to get behind a wagon gate out in right center field so Carpenter can continue his work in search of his fourth win of the year. He's 3 and 1 coming in. Cerillo takes a strike. Jeff has not had a fun day. He has struck out twice. Complained on the first one when he was caught looking and went down swinging the next time and he is two thirds of the way toward his third strike out of the day. Came in five for nine 
against Carpenter. Fastball in. And got him again. Three strikeouts for Cirillo today and nine on the afternoon for Carpenter. He's threading the needle. Look for it inside, and it's right there. Freezes him. Looking for something away. It's the most by a Cardinal pitcher this season. Nine strikeouts, and he's only got one out in the sixth inning under his belt. Long way to go as he misses low to Jenkins, who is 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. His most strikeouts last season was 11 at Cincinnati. And he had a 12 strikeout game against the Yankees while with Toronto in 2001. Certainly has a shot at that. Two and three hitters for the Brewers have a combined five strikeouts and now two strikes on Jenkins. Spivey, who's the number six hitter, has also struck out twice. Here's a one two. He didn't go. Pitch was pretty good too. Two and two. Top of the order. One through four is 0 for 10. That's how you contain an offense. A uh, two two pitch. Breaking ball is looped into left field. That'll be most likely a double. Taguchi digs it out. It's a one out double for Jenkins who's on base for the first time today and Carlos Lee will be the hitter. This pitch by pitch feature brought to you by your Mid-America Chevrolet dealers. They get the sinker there going. So he comes in on him for a strike. Breaking ball for strike two. And he kind of misses with a fastball up and away and then it looks like a breaking ball that kind of hung up there that he hit for the double into the opposite field. Now it's Lee. Takes a strike. Lee so far today is 0 for 2. He reached on an error and bounced back to Carpenter. Carlos hitting 241. Three Brewer home runs, a former Chicago White Sox outfielder. Bending back for some reason. Strike two right down the middle at 0 and 2. He was looking for something else. A little cutter right there. Jenkins at second, one out. And a broken bat. Ground ball back to Carpenter. Why not just let him go over to third? That's the second out of the inning. Lee is 0 for 3. Carpenter had the runner hung up if he wanted to go that way, but he's got two outs in the inning and a four run lead. Didn't want to get too tricky. Yeah, I think that's it. He, you know, he, by habit, he turned and looked at the runner and then he was stunned because he had him trapped, but it let, he let him get away. And as you said, you know, if with two outs, if he does his job, that runner at third can't score. But he just gives you a little more incentive to bear down on this hitter. And that hitter is Brandon who takes a ball. A little tight. Runner at third, Jenkins, two out. Brandon's one for two. He has a bunt hit and a strikeout. A 1 0. Stop by Molina, 2 0. Cardinals in the bottom of the sixth will have Carpenter, Rosalonic, and Walker. Anybody gets on pools. Carpenter with excellent control walks very very few and sometimes works to your disadvantage when you fall behind a count. There's a strike two and one 91 miles per hour. Velocity wise one of the harder pitches he's thrown all day. A two one. He is hit in the air to center. Edmonds back. Still going. And it's gone. A two run shot by Branyan. That makes it a 5 3 game here in the sixth. 
The wind picked that thing up and just carried it out of here. And Edmonds is looking up at that yellow stripe and the padding, which came down. Edmonds set up Al way in front of the wall, and that was in that area where if he went back to the wall, might have had a shot at him. Well, you see the way he keeps on going back, back, back. He was just shocked that it turned him around. And I don't think he would have gotten to it. I think it was had enough to carry beyond his reach, but we've seen him make some spectacular plays. But I think that just totally fooled him that it carried that far. Spivey takes a strike. All of a sudden, it's a two-run game. Try to muscle up. It was 93 on our gun. And sometimes you muscle up, the ball straightens out. Brandon, who came up in the Indians organization, has also spent some time in Cincinnati, can hit him a long way. And that one he got under and hit it as far up as he did out. And for Russ, that's his fourth Milwaukee Brewer home run. So the Brewers have life. Here's an 0-2 to Spivey. Oh, good pitch. One and two. Spivey trying to avoid his third strikeout. With the bases empty, Spivey grounds one. That will be a hit. So the inning continues for Bill Hall. And it looked like Carpenter was breezing right through. And just like that, the tying run comes to the plate. And Dave Duncan comes out of the dugout to jog out and talk to the Cardinal right-hander. Now they slow him down a little bit, not let him get uh, frustrated. In the fifth inning, he got the first two out via strikeouts, and he gave up three consecutive hits. This inning, three more hits, only seven allowed on the on the day, but six in the last two innings. So with Hall at the plate, we remind you this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the St. Louis Cardinals LLC and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of the game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals LLC. Number seven man in the order, Bill Hall, is at the plate. Five hits on the season. He takes it low. Runner at first, two down, two runs home, and a strike. That pitch backed up a little. One ball, one strike. That's the cutter. Slider, cutter. And occasionally it's backed up. Instead of going down the way, it'll kind of come in towards the right-handed hitter. So one one is grounded up the middle for Nunez. Tough play. Made to look easy. The inning is over. Russ Brannion goes deep. Straight away center field. Two more runs in the sixth inning for the Milwaukee Brewers. Out of the hand of Carpenter. Off the bat of Brannion and into the grass in center. 5-3 after five and a half. On May 5th. It's a special live presentation of the best damn light heavyweight fight period presented by Kingdom of Heaven as two former champions meet in a title eliminator bout. Montel Ice Griffin takes on Julio Cesar Gonzalez. It's May 5th only on FSN Midwest. That's a clean bullpen isn't it. It is. That is Martha Stewart out there. Cleaning up the bullpen turf. Count goes to 2 0 on Chris Carpenter, who leads it off. Joey Castro, bullpen coach. Is Castro cleaning up out there? Here's a 2 0. Carpenter tips it foul. One strike on Chris. Two balls and a strike. It'll be Chris, then back to the top. Greg Zalonic, Walker. Pujols and the Cardinals have to go back to work. This looked like it was going to be a coast-through game, and it 
is not in that category anymore. 5-3 after the Brewers got the two-run home run by Brannion. Two and two now on Carpenter. And De La Rosa is thrown hard. 94 miles per hour. Atlanta's opened up a 7-3 lead in the sixth inning at Shea Stadium against the Mets. Cubs and Reds 1-1 after an inning and a half. Still 2-0 Pittsburgh, bottom of the eighth at Pittsburgh over Houston. Breaking ball is tapped third base side. De La Rosa bobbles it, throws Carpenter out, one away. Mark Grezelanek has been terrific. He needs a triple for the cycle. First time up, home run. Second time up, a single. Later scored. And then an RBI ground rule double into right center field. So how about a triple? He can erase John Mabry's name from the media guide as the last Cardinal player. I don't think the truck would honor that. You don't? No. They love Mabes too much? Yeah. They like Grizzolonic, though. Well, they like Grizzolonic, but uh, it, it might be you change it to the to last two cycles. Owen won the count on Mark. Owen two, the count on Mark. The problem is the guy he wears out, Victor Santos, is out of the game. 10 out of 19 against Santos, including three for three today. Here comes an 0-2. The opposite way, that ball's going to get down fair. Rudzelanik has at least a double. Keep on running, Mark. Over to third he goes, and he'll make it without a play. We'll wait and see how they score it. It could be a double and an error or a triple in the cycle. Yeah, it's beyond our sight lines, but you get down that corner, and it took Jenkins a long time to dig it out. So we'll see what happens down here in the corner. Oh, I think you got to play it as a triple. I do, too. It got behind him. If it is, that's the cycle. And they're going to throw the ball in, so it's a triple and the cycle. Mark the last, two, the last two cycles, John Mabry and Grezelanik. And look at John's first one to applaud. He knows it. He did it out in Colorado, and Grezelanik does it by going homer, single, double. And then that ball down in the corner got behind Jenkins. And a triple for Grezelanik. Darrell Ward was the last player to do it here. He did it for the Pirates. That was last season. He's got a chance to do some more damage in this game, too. Only in the sixth inning. Walker has got to get that run home. Infield is in. One ball, no strikes. Breaking ball stays inside. 2-0. No action right now for the Brewers in their bullpen. With Albert Pujols waiting on deck. You can see how close he is. Here's a 2-0. 3-0. Fans here at Bush Stadium almost saw a triple play the other day against Houston. And now those that pack into Bush Stadium on a big attendance day saw a Cardinal hit for the cycle. A 3-0 pitch is right down the middle. Well, they did see a triple play until it was reversed. That's correct. On three and one. Off the plate. De La Rosa makes the play. The throw is in time. And standing at third is Grudzelanik with two out. So Walker can't bring home the run. And Albert Pujols will, I would imagine, be walked here with two out. Edmonds on deck. Uh, not going on contact and his first cycle home run in the first double or excuse me a single in the second a double an RBI in the fourth and a triple in the sixth but right now they're going to potentially walk Albert again.
last two plate appearances, that's been the result. And Edmonds will bat. Runners at the corners and two out. Cardinals need to get one of those runs back or more. This is an easy decision for Ned Yost. A big out as De La Rosa came back from a 3-0 count to get Larry Walker. First and third, two out for Jim Edmonds. I was a little surprised that Grizzolani didn't come home when he saw the high chopper. There's nobody at third base, so he could have kept on extending his lead, but it's almost you've got to make a split-second decision and go. But when you saw the high bouncer, you had to assume that he could have gotten down that line and it would have been a bang-bang play, and as it turned out, they intentionally passed Albert Getting the second out. Could have been a swinging bunch. Ball one to Edmonds. This may be one of these situations where Jim just kind of really hold that front shoulder in and really think about driving the ball out into left center. That's what he did his first time up. For an RBI double. That's low. 2-0. and oh. So the lefty, De La Rosa, fell behind Walker 3-0, and oh, came back and got him. He's in a spot here where he has to throw a strike to Edmonds down 2-0. Tell why the Milwaukee was excited about getting De La Rosa. He started all last year at AAA. Got a good arm from Monterey, Mexico. Edmonds way out in front. Grudzelanek started the day at 271. He has raised his average, hitting for the cycle, going 4-4. Four for four, 46 points. He needs to come home and tap home plate and make a count here. Edmonds has delivered. That's a big hit. Makes it 6-3 here in the sixth inning, and it makes the Brewers pay for walking Albert Pujols. Second RBI for Jim, his second hit of the day, and you know, cross-firing left-hander concentrating on the other side of the plate, away from him, and Jimmy, that pitches it to his strengths. And he doesn't pull off the ball and goes with the pitch away. Boy, he's that much more dangerous. So the cycle for Grudzelanek not only gives Mark a personal highlight, but here in the sixth inning gives the Cardinals another run. Roland takes one inside. Now it's Pujols at second, Edmonds at first, two out. And the Cardinals are up by three. And there's more action for the Brewers in their pen. Roland lines one to Spivey. The inning is over. Cardinals get a run back, though. And congratulations to Mark Grudzelanek. He hits for the cycle today against Milwaukee into the seventh, 6-3 Cardinals. Big difference in this game is the production out of the top of the lineup. You see what the Brewers have done against Chris Carpenter, the Cardinals. Nine out of 14. Grudzelanek's been the main reason why the Cardinals are up 6-3 to three as we play now in the seventh, hitting for the cycle. Homer single, double, and triple in that order in the first, second, fourth, and sixth. It'll be Moeller, the catcher, then a pinch hitter. And then back to the top of the order, Clark for Milwaukee here in the seventh inning. Moeller got his first hit of the day, or RBI of the day, second hit of the year, his last time up. Hitting a buck 11. Obermuller's in the on-deck circle. A 1-1. Foul. And it's 1-2. and two. Carpenter has struck out nine. No surprise that he has walked nobody. He's been pitching out in front for the majority of the day. I said last night when Obermuller 
hit for himself got that base hit I say here's another Kieschnick and now he's going to pinch it looks Kieschnick a guy who for the last couple of years no longer with this team was used to be a farmhand with the Cubs and became a pitcher and was a pitcher and bench hitter for Milwaukee as Bowler strikes out and that makes it 10 strikeouts on the day for Chris Carpenter. Nico Sports is offering a 12 by 14 framed and matted plaque for sale to commemorate the last season of Bush Stadium. Features an aerial photo of opening day 2005 and highlighted below the photo is a nameplate detailing Cardinal baseball history at Bush Stadium as well as a commemorative St. Louis Cardinals medallion. Each plaque includes a voucher for two tickets as Obermuller grounds the first pitch to Grudzelanik. Two out. Voucher for two tickets to select Cardinal games during this season, as well as an individually numbered certificate of authenticity. Call 1 800 345 2868. 1 800 345 2868. If there was more copy about that, I'd certainly read it. As a right hander, Adam Adams gets loose. He's their closer. It's Mike Adams down in the bullpen as Brady Clark takes a strike. So maybe back on the beam for Chris Carpenter getting it back together after struggling a little in the sixth. Giving up those three straight hits in the fifth with two out. That's two quick strikes on Clark. Only two off his career high in strikeouts is Carpenter, and he has Brady Clark set up. More strikeout would give him his Cardinal high. Equaling what he did against Cincinnati last year. That's ball one. Bottom part of the order will bat for the Cardinals in the bottom of the seventh. One two. He went. And that is strikeout number 11 and a perfect seventh inning. Time to stretch. Carpenter's doing it again on his way to win number four. 6 3 Cardinals, middle of the seventh. Congratulations to Pam Rogers, today's merchandise prize winner in the Hyundai Long Drive Inning Sweepstakes. The Cardinals hit a home run in the seventh. Pam Rogers qualifies for the Hyundai Tucson drawing in September. Register, visit a St. Louis area Hyundai dealer. Nice day, weather-wise and pitching-wise for Chris Carpenter. Not as dominant as he was against the Cubs a week ago, but we'll take it. 6-3, bottom of the seventh, and so Taguchi will lead it off. 11 strikeouts for Carpenter. He'll go back out there for the eighth. Here's Mike Adams, and as you said, Al, he's the closer for this Milwaukee team. Well, he might have lost that job. He gave up that solo home run to Scott Rowland. That's why he got the loss. And they've taken that young hard thrower turn bow. And now I guess he's the closer. Mike Adams last year got to the big league scene, did a nice job as they like his arm. It's outside one ball one strike. Danny Kolb was the closer last year for Milwaukee and he was moved on to the Atlanta Braves. They moved Kolb in as the closer, moved John Smoltz out back into the starting rotation. Smoltz after that first start, which was a struggle, has been very good, and he and the Braves beat Pedro Martinez yesterday. Smoltz is back, matched up against some pretty good pitchers. Yeah. Two balls, two strikes. How about Friday night's game from Atlanta? Mark Mulder against Tim Hudson. It's a great matchup. Teammates, part of the big three with the Oakland A's. Here's a 2 2. And Taguchi lines out to Cirillo. Can't hit it any harder, and Cirillo made a nice catch for the first out. Hot corner, reactionary position. His reactions were up to the task. Mark Mulder 
Tim Hudson. Part of baseball's economics. They're not both still with the Oakland Athletics. Cardinals are thrilled to have Mulder, and Hudson's been very good for the Atlanta Braves. Ball one outside to Nunez. Mulder is settled in with back-to-back -back terrific starts together. The effort in Pittsburgh and then over the weekend against Roger Clemens going 10 innings of shutout ball on four hits. One ball, one strike on Nunez. That's inside a long-term deal with his new club, the Atlanta Braves. He is from Georgia. And I'm sure the Cardinals are putting together figures. Hoping to do the same with Mulder, but he has a contract for this year and next, so it's not as urgent. Two and one to count. Two and two. Nunez so far 0 for three, one for two last night. Insurance RBI that he knocked in late. And now trying to get on here in front of Molina. And with Reyes getting ready in the bullpen. If the Cardinals would consider lifting Carpenter. Might not get to that point anyway as Nunez grounds out. Two down. Yadier Molina is 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. Here he comes. If you'd like to win Cardinal tickets and participate. The Southwest Airlines family of the game promotion during a Cardinals home game. Here's your chance. Send your name, address, and phone number to Southwest Airlines family of the game, P.O. Box 771192, St. Louis, Missouri, 63177. Roger Cedeno is in the on-deck circle, so Carpenter may be finished as Molina tried to wait on that pitch and fouled it back. But we'll wait and see. He may go back out there anyway. Yeah, it could either way, but Reyes would go in if the ninth spot in the order comes to the plate. But you know, uh, Carpenter's pitch count had to get up with those 11 strikeouts. 0-2 oh, on Molina. So far, 98 pitches, Al, for Chris Carpenter. Not bad. Through seven innings, what helps once again is he does not allow a walk. Just sticking the bat out, popping one foul to the Cardinal dugout. So still 0-2. Yadier sounded like he hit that with a piece of firewood. Or the leg of a chair. And 0-2 pitch. Molina taps it foul again. Tony La Russa had his hat off and was ready to make a fielding play. But the net. Or that step. Didn't allow him the chance. Zelani can't wait to bat. <laughs> no. Molina almost walked right in. Tony La Russa does his part for James, our camera operator down in the dugout. James, I got you. No, I think he went over there to get some counseling from James. James, getting that point in the game, I need some help. So how many of those yes, he's fifth on the all-time list wins James responsible oh, for? Oh, I'd, I'd say, room? you know, almost 800, 800 of them here in St. Louis. He calls them on the road. The base is empty, two out. The one-two pitch to Molina. Two and two. Trying to battle. Little things, baby steps. Get a good at bat. See pitch as well. Foul off a couple of nasty ones. Don't go after some tantalizing pitcher's pitches. Wait. And then wrap them. Yeah, wait for the mistake and do something with it. Let it go. Full count. Been a good at bat. 
They were deke in the world with Sedano in the on-deck circle. Sedano goes back. Carpenter's got his helmet on. And Molina's got a two-out hit. That was a good at-bat. That was a good at-bat for Yadier Molina. And that gets Carpenter to the plate here in the seventh. He kept on battling. Finally, he got the pitch that he could handle. Running in on him, and he turns on it. Solid single to left. So here is Carpenter. Reyes stops loosening in the bullpen. He's not coming in if they're not going to lift Carpenter for a pinch hitter. And Chris, strike one. Maybe James said, hey, Tony, what are you doing? Get Carpenter out there. Carpenter's got a shot at his all-time career high in strikeouts. And he just finished off a 1 2 3 seventh with two strikeouts. He's in the hole here 0 and 2. Cardinals lead by three. It'll be the two, three, and four hitters for the Brewers in the eighth. Cirillo, Jenkins, and Lee. And 0 2. Deals and Carpenter takes two and two. Santos started for Milwaukee, went four innings, allowed five runs on seven hits. De La Rosa, two innings, one run on three hits. And now Mike Adams, his first inning of work, 2 2 pitch. And the play for Spivey to end the inning. We go to the eighth inning. Part of the order coming up for Milwaukee. Carpenter will head back to work. He and the Cardinals lead it 6-3. Today's Jack in the Box standings. The Cardinals enjoying a four-game lead over the Cubs and Reds. Those two teams are playing right now and tied in the third inning 1-1. The Astros are six out. Same for the Brewers and the Pirates at the back end of the division. Cardinal fans, visit stlcardinals.com. The number one site for live game pitch by pitch coverage. STLCardinals.com, where baseball is always on. Big inning here for Carpenter. Eckstein takes over. It's short. Nunez is finished for the day. And the first to Cirillo is over, but low ball one. Carpenter has struck out 11. Part of the order, leading by three. And the Cardinal bullpen has Ray King getting loose. One ball, one strike on Cirillo. Cirillo has a hat trick as Carpenter struck him out three times, looking for the golden sombrero. The one one. Breaking balls tap foul. It's one and two. Twelve strikeouts would tie his career high. It's the Yankees in 01. Uh, he was pitching for Toronto. He's got 11. September the 4th of 2001. Good, Zach. Now Cirillo steps out. Jeff struck out in the first, struck out in the fourth, struck out in the sixth. Leads off the eighth. 1 2 pitch. 2 and 2. Kind of an odd delivery there from Carpenter. Both bullpens are active. And the 2-2 pitch. Tap foul. Still throwing the ball hard and hitting the spots. 38,000 plus at the ballpark today. So just a little short of capacity and the finale of this set tomorrow weather permitting. I know the weather forecast isn't that great but hopefully the Cardinals at 110 will be able to finish off this homestand which is going to be good no matter what happens. That's just high and tight. Cardinals have lost only once so far. 
on this homestand. They swept Houston. Trying to go two for two against Milwaukee with one to go after splitting with the Cubs at the start of this set. Pass ball on three and two and a ground ball to second. Zelonik. One away. Jenkins will be the hitter. Cardinal Baseball is a production of Bud Sports and is an exclusive presentation of FSN Midwest. I think it might be tough, Al, for Chris Carpenter unless he gets some real quick outs to get through nine innings again. But it's early in the season. The Cardinals will have a shot within one week having three complete games, including one 10-inning effort by Mulder against Houston and Carpenter would have two of them. Yeah, it'd be a decision for Tony but if he gets through the eighth inning it's not bad turning over at least a three run lead with one inning to go for your bullpen. Meanwhile Carpenter works against the better hitters for the Brewers here and he has Jenkins set up at 0 and 2. This would be one of those situations where Tony would say it was reversed. And you know he was had uh, was into their bullpen where he said you know I might bring in the guy that I was thinking was going to be my closer. <clears throat> I'd bring him. <clears throat> I'd bring him in in the eighth to face the heart of the order, and then when they got down towards the end, bring in the other guy. That just misses two balls, two strikes, and falling behind the count. Second consecutive hitter. He's kind of going on fumes right now, but he's a battler and makes a good pitch. He can still get some more outs. With one out, Jenkins floats another hit into left field, just like he did his last time up. This one's a single, the last one a double. It's one on one out. Lee coming up, Ranyan on deck, the lefty in the bullpen. This could be the last hitter for Carpenter. As we will look at the pitch count of 110, he is right on the edge of. That's the way he had, what, 97 or something coming into this inning? Well, here's a right handed batter for him. The lefty, Brandon, next. Ray King in the bullpen. Let's get the double play ball. One on, one out, and a breaking ball in for a strike. Carlos doesn't like that bender at all. He's 0 for 3 today. He's twice hit back to Carpenter. Chopped at three balls today. 0 and 2. Lee looked like he was bailing out or pulling off that pitch a little bit after looking at the breaking ball for a strike. It's nothing in two. Reaching for it to spoil that pitch is Lee. So 113 pitches for Carpenter. Cardinal pitchers have held Carlos Lee in this series 0 for 7, and now he is 0 for 23 on the season against the Cardinals. The reason why they're 4 0 against Milwaukee. Still 0 and 2 on Lee. I would imagine this is going to be it. That's why I get the double play. And another foul tip. Cardinals now have a right hander joining. Ray King looks like Tavares out in the bullpen. Tavares. Six three top of the eighth one on one out. And an 0 2 count on Carlos Lee. And he went struck him out and that ties a personal best for Carpenter 12 strikeouts. And Tony La Russa is going to sprint out to the mound and talk with Carpenter. Well he's going to give him now he's already made the sign he's going to go right to his left hander but. He wanted to make sure he explained the situation to Carpenter. He did a great job. Another terrific start from the Cardinal right-hander, Chris Carpenter. Hopefully he'll be rewarded with his fourth win of the year. And 
ends the day with 12 strikeouts and leaves the field with a 6-3 lead. A man on, two out. Brandon coming up, King coming in. Daytime 12-10 starts and Chris Carpenter mixing well his last two times out. After going the distance against the Cubs, he was fantastic today against Milwaukee. Ends the day with 12 strikeouts. Allows three runs on eight hits. No walks. And certainly is deserving of his fourth win against only one loss. Watch them all swing and miss and disappear. Including his last pitch of the day to get Carlos Lee. Pitch Lee, 118 pitches. The fans appreciate that effort. And now turn it over to this bullpen without Izzy. Izzy on the disabled list. Carmen Kelly has been recalled, but you go to your veterans, and Ray King has been perfect. His 10th appearance, no record, but no ERA. And try and get this. This is probably his only batter. So hopefully it'll win the eighth inning. And batter is Brandy in the lefty. Last night, King came close to striking out Jeff Jenkins and then ended up giving up a double to the left-handed hitting outfielder, Matt Morris and Chris Carpenter. Morris knows how Carpenter's feeling watching his 6-3 lead in the hands. The Cardinal bullpen, two out in the eighth. And one ball, one strike on Brannion. Cardinals have Tavares getting loose with Spivey on deck. Brandon homered his last time up. He's two out of three. Four homers, 11 RBIs on the season his first year with Milwaukee. Cincinnati has taken a 6-1 to one lead in the fourth inning at Wrigley Field over the Cubs. Now it's 6-2 to two in the bottom of the fourth. Here's a 1-1. Strike two. They were postponed. Baltimore at Boston. You look at Carpenter. Last time out on Thursday against Chicago. and Not bad on a Wednesday against Milwaukee. Ray King has his hitter, Brandon, set up at one and two. Atlanta leading in New York, eight to three, bottom of the eighth. Pittsburgh ended up shutting out Houston, two nothing. Kip Wells against Andy Pettit. Brandon goes down swing, and Ray King does his job. Mark Redzelonic will lead it off in the bottom of the eighth. He has hit for the cycle today. Homer, single. Double and triple. And the Cardinals lead 6-3 after 7. This game recap brought to you by Bank of America, the official bank of baseball. Red Zalonik will lead it off here. He has hit for the cycle. First time he's done it in his career. And Chris Carpenter defensively is pretty much taking care of the rest. The cycle for Red Zalonik. Homer, single, Double, and then the hardest part, normally, the triple. Down the right field line, Jenkins couldn't play it cleanly. It bounced behind him, and a nice hand for Grudzelanek, a partial standing O. How about a 317 average as he stands there at home plate after the 4 for 4 day? Started at 271. He is at 317 right now. And for the first time, Grudzelanek has been retired today. These knowledgeable Cardinal fans salute his efforts today as he tips his helmet to him on his way back into the dugout. One out here in the eighth. Tommy Phelps on the mound. Now last year they didn't have a left-hander in their bullpen and now they've got two and they've already made 17 appearances this year. Not an appearance by a lefty out of the pen a year ago. And 
A year ago, Tommy Phelps was pitching for Florida. Two and zero on Larry Walker, who is one for four. Walker doubled in the first, scored on a hit by Edmonds. And he's tapped back to the pitcher twice and struck out. Two and zero. Walker tried to hold up, could not. Pujols on deck. Two and two on Walker. In the ninth inning, excuse me, Al, it'll be Spivey, Hal, and Hall, rather, and Moeller for Milwaukee. Phelps was born in Seoul, Korea. If he's an Army brat. He misses low to Walker, three and two. One out, base is empty, and Walker is jammed, fights it off, fouls it back. Ricky Vitalico, a former Cardinals, getting loose for the Brewers in their pen. Cardinals have Tavares getting loose. He'll come on in the ninth inning as Walker hey, takes strike three, and he can't believe it. Out, nobody on pools coming up. Cardinal baseball on FSN Midwest brought to you by Bud Light. Fresh, smooth, real. It's all here. Here's Albert. Strike one. Al, I would say that for the most part, outside of matching up with a team that's got a lot of lefties, let's say, coming up in the ninth inning. If you had to point to one guy that's going to take the majority of the save situations while Isringhausen is on the disabled list, it's the guy that's coming in in the ninth inning, Julian Tavares. And he has the most experience. So that's uh, that'll be a deciding factor. Last night it was Flores who came in to get the final two outs. Tavares had already been used at that point. He and King both had already pitched. 2-1. Right up the middle, they had him played right there. That's the second baseman, Spivey, on the other side of the bag. Cards go in order. That means we go to the ninth inning. Bottom part of the lineup coming up for the Brewers. They trail the Cardinals 6-3. Today, following Midwest Sports Tonight Today, stay tuned to FSN Midwest. We present our monthly edition of Cardinals Magazine. This month, we take a closer look at Cardinal greats Bob Gibson and Albert Pujols. Cardinals Magazine Today on FSN Midwest. And that's some music that will get you going. A little different. Did you like that music better, Al? I thought I'd rather have them put away music. Well, we can use that as put away music for Julian Tavares. He'll try to put away the Brewers. Rack up the save, give Carpenter his fourth win, and give the Cardinals their 14th win against only five losses, which is right now easily the best record in the National League and inside of the White Sox in the American League. It is the second best record in all of baseball. Julian has 17 career saves. And he starts a strike to Junior Spivey. Four of them he acquired last year pitching for the Cardinals. He was very good as a setup man, and then he had 11 for Pittsburgh the year before. So he knows the feeling of being out there in the ninth inning, trying to get the final three out. So far this season, Tavares is 0 and 1. 10 innings, 13 hits. He started slowly last year and then became almost automatic in the second half of the season. Yeah, last season, he posted a career low 238 ERA while appearing in the most games 77 since 97. And he incorporated this Laredo. You know, a little breaking ball, but he starts it way out the side and almost appears like it's being thrown behind the back of a right handed batter. He strikes out Spivey to start the ninth. One away. Good sinking action, running pitch. 
You, I heard you talking about Rod Carew, and he was a hitting coach for a while with the Brewers and all those strikeouts. The Cardinal pitching staff today between Carpenter King and Tavares racked up 14 strikeouts of these Brewer hitters. There's one out here in the ninth inning. Bill Hall. Five out of 24 on the season. Fouls one down the right field line into the corner for strike one. Can't emphasize enough with Flores picking up the save last night, getting the final two outs after Izzy was injured. And now if Tavares can do it again here today, then everybody kind of relaxes a little bit on that team and they don't worry about the injury. They just say, Izzy, just take your time getting healing and making sure when you do come back you're 100 percent healthy it just makes things easier if you keep on winning oh and one the count on Hall that's a good pitch called the ball Randy Flores who's been impressive the left hander who has been around a while but is finally getting a legitimate shot at Frequent use at the big league level. His second save in his career last night. Comes a 1 1 to Hall. 1 and 2. Problem is not just what happens in the ninth inning, obviously, when you don't have Ezringhausen, but because you have to use a Tavares or save somebody like Tavares or maybe even King from time to time for the ninth inning, it gives an opportunity to guys like. Flores and Jernell and Cali and Reyes to work very important outs in the seventh and eighth as Tavares drops down and strikes out Bill Hall two out and our play of the game is brought to you by Bud Light the cycle for Grud Zelonic. He started it with a home run. He got a little old single his next time up, a double into right center field, and then he needed a triple his next time up, and he got it down the right field line. You just wonder when he was running those bases if he realized, hey, I got my triple. The toughest of the, the four to acquire. 93 from Tavares misses upstairs, ball one. Certainly gives, just to finish the point, Al, about using guys like Callie and Janelle, it gives you an opportunity to almost be in a position where you have to use them, see what you have in them. Maybe you have somebody like Janelle who gets comfortable and gets on a roll, or Callie, and they become bigger weapons when Isringhausen comes back. Absolutely. You know, there's still some doubt. You know the roles they can do, but until you get them in that, getting the 27th out, you know, you still don't you don't know if they can handle that. So it's a it's a great opportunity to see these guys. Two balls and a strike. Tavares and Damian Miller. Damian Miller off the bench, batting for Mulder, who ends the day one for three. Now it's three and one. Brewers need two base runners to have a chance. Another pinch hitter is in the on deck circle. That's Magruder. was Miller who bounced into the game ending double play last night against Flores. Tavares knocks it down. Throws off balance throws it away. And Miller will have to hold it first and all you have to hope for at the end of that. Ugly looking play is that Tavares is OK. Why in the world would he throw it though? <laughs> Spins around and backhands it knocks it down and then he scrambles for it and <laughs> not the, exactly the footwork you'd like to see but he appears to be okay he shocked himself that he stabbed at it look at that ankle kind of collapsed on him and that's what <laughs> fell down and Magruder can make this game interesting now if he reaches Magruder Chris Magruder off the bench after the pinch hit single by Damian Miller, the tying run would come to the plate. Brady Clark is probably their biggest threat in their lineup. Well, 
Magruder hitting 227, a home run, five RBIs. Way late on that swing. Cardinals one out away from win number 14. Play behind Miller over at first. Ball one. Cardinals are willing to give Damian Miller second base, but he will not take it. Chris is batting 429, just three for seven on the road, and that's the same average with runners in scoring position. Two for seven as a pinch hitter this year. Here comes a 1-1 from Tavares. 2-1. Cardinals have led from the bottom of the first on. From the first batter that they sent to the plate, and Grzelanek on. And he homered in the left center field to start it. Cardinals got three in the first, one in the second, one in the fourth, one in the sixth on a big two-out RBI hit by Edmonds. 2-1. Three and one. Out to talk is Molina. So Magruder has not been challenged here yet. Albert Pujols hoping that the Cardinals can get the final out here before the tying run comes to the plate. That's Brady Clark on deck. That's why it's important not to let any of these leads slip away. And, you know, hold on for a few days, and then the guys will all build confidence in you. Full count. Now the Cardinals are a strike away. There's Izzy. Nobody pulling harder for Tavares than Izzy. Side. And the Cardinals win at 6-3. With Izzy watching, Tavares comes in and shuts the door on the Brewers, and the Cardinals add to their National League best mark. It's now 14-5. And, and another terrific pitching performance from Chris Carpenter and hitting for the cycle is Mark Redzolano. Take a break and come back. Cardinals will go for the sweep tomorrow. A 6-3 win today. Back with more in a moment. 11 of 12. The Cardinals have won 11 out of 12 as they win it today 6-3. Grudzelanek and Carpenter, those are the two names, Al, that we'll be talking about after this game. Well, two guys that stick out. Carpenter, outstanding. Picks up that fourth win with it. Ties his career high in strikeouts with 12. Grizzolani hits for the cycle, but it was a good effort from everyone all around. And once again, don't blow any of these leads while Izzy, your closer's out. King gets a strikeout facing one batter. Tavares strikes out the side in the ninth inning to get the save. So the Cardinals have another good day. Go for the sweep tomorrow on the air at 12.30 with Cardinals today before a 110 makeup start against the Brewers. Jason Marquis will take on Chris Capuano. Midwest Sports tonight, today, coming up on the other side of the break.